SpaceX is trying to build the most ambitious rocket in history, the Starship. It could be the key to getting humans to Mars, but getting it off the ground has not been smooth sailing. Oh, it just blew up! Oh my god! And this is what happened with Booster 7 last week. So why does the SpaceX Starship keep exploding? Let's expose everything about this in today's episode of Alpha Tech Channel. A SpaceX Super Heavy booster was rocked by a significant explosion and subjected to multiple fires at the launch pad during the rocket's latest round of testing. But a fireball for B-7 turns out to be very gentle. Remember, SpaceX broke or exploded eight Starship prototypes for a successful landing of SN-15 last May. Honestly, rockets are filled with highly explosive substances that need to be burned in a controlled manner to allow them to overcome Earth's gravity and deliver often very heavy cargo into space. At the same time, their structures experience extreme loads while needing to be as light as possible. Many things can go wrong, and when that happens, pow, there's no way back. Super Heavy Booster 7 has already completed a significant amount of testing, including four cryogenic proofs, or cryoproofs, and one Raptor thrust simulation test. Since its third return to the pad, SpaceX has several more ambiguous tests, none of which appeared to involve cryogenic propellant loading. But for the latest explosion, the testing looked a little bit different, but with more activity from Booster 7's Raptors before a spin prime test led to a large fireball exploding from underneath the launch mount. During a spin prime test, high pressure gases are fed into the turbo pumps, spinning them up to full speed, simulating engine startup but stopping short of ignition. SpaceX has performed this test on Raptors many times before, but this was the first time on the launch mount with all 33 engines together. During the test, the rocket was fueled with cryogenic liquid methane and liquid oxygen propellant. When the vehicle was fueled, it caused significant venting. It was seen from underneath the rocket before the massive blast occurred. The unintended result of this seems to have been a buildup of gaseous methane under the launch mount that managed to find an ignition source. Later, after an apparent LOX dump from the booster, a fire broke out near the base of the launch tower, and the fire burned through a trailer. In a short Twitter conversation under the explosion video, astronomer Jonathan McDowell wrote to Musk, In the big picture, still early days with Raptor 2, still learning, I guess, good luck with the analysis. Musk also gave the impression the problem was caused by an accumulation of unburned propellant expelled from the 33 Raptor 2 engines that would power the Starship boosters into space. Musk reminded his followers engineering a launch vehicle is not a simple task. Cryogenic fuel is an added challenge as it evaporates to create fuel-air explosion risk in partially oxygen atmospheres like Earth. Responding to a follower who wondered if it would be prudent to follow NASA's example, during the space shuttle era, the agency used radial outward firing igniters, or ROFIs, or sparklers, to set off escape fuel before it could accumulate. Musk said SpaceX would do the same. He also said SpaceX technicians may have overdone it with this particular test. This is one of the things we'll be doing going forward. This particular issue, however, was specific to the engine spin start test. Raptor has a complex start sequence. Going forward, we won't do a spin test on all 33 engines at once. Well, this failure happened and maybe more and more in the future simply because Starship is a new system trying to do unusual things. Super Heavy B-7 is absolutely treading significantly new ground. SpaceX has never ignited more than six Raptor V-1 engines simultaneously and has never tested more than three engines at a time on a Super Heavy booster. And now we have Super Power Raptor 2. In fact, building, qualifying, shipping, and installing 33 new Raptor 2 engines on Super Heavy B-7 was already an impressive achievement and produced the most potentially powerful rocket booster ever assembled. SpaceX used the six weeks Booster 7 spent back in a factory assembly bay to finish installing aero covers, surfaces known as chines or strakes, car-sized grid fins, Starlink internet dishes, and most importantly, 33 upgraded Raptor V2 engines. Combined, Booster 7 could produce up to 7,600 metric tons, or about 16.8 million foot-pounds of thrust, at or before liftoff. Crucially, SpaceX also finished installing most of Booster 7's Raptor heat shields in the same period, completing in six weeks work that took Booster 4 closer to half a year. 
Before actual static fires begin, Booster 7 will also need to complete one or more wet dress rehearsals, WDRs, a test that exactly simulates a launch but stops just before the moment of ignition. For a full wet dress rehearsal, WDR, which also has never been done with Super Heavy, SpaceX would need to fill the booster with 3,400 ton or 7.5 million pounds of propellant. And out of an abundance of caution, Super Heavy B-7 would likely have far less propellant aboard during almost all of its static fire tests. But a full static fire with a full load of propellant, simulating most pre-launch conditions, will likely be one of the last main goals of any static fire campaign. At full thrust, 33 Raptor 2 engines would likely burn around 25 tons or about 55,000 pounds of propellant per second, so a huge amount of propellant will be needed regardless. Everything is truly unprecedented in the rocket industry. Only explosions can give Elon Musk and SpaceX the opportunity to learn. Regardless, will Booster 7's explosion delay the first Starship's flight into orbit, and when will it fly? Well, the company is still assessing the damage to the prototype and the company's massive launch pad and tower, SpaceX CEO Elon Musk is expressing confidence that the inaugural orbital flight of Starship could still happen in a matter of weeks. If testing goes well, as soon as next month, Musk has said, when asked when the orbital test launch could take place. We're not holding our breath. After all, the CEO has been promising the same thing at least since October of last year. Fortunately, much has changed since then. This time around, SpaceX is working towards the launch with regulatory approval from the Federal Aviation Administration in hand, a certification that also came with 75 environmental conditions it has to meet. Either way, as Musk said in the newest interview with Tim Dobb, everyday astronaut, and it's okay if you blow up an engine because you've got, you know, a high production rate. You've got a bunch of engines coming after that. So we've blown up, I don't know, I'm just guessing at least 20, maybe over 30 engines, and we've melted probably 50 chambers, maybe more than 50 chambers we've melted. Thus, B-7's explosion may be a good thing as SpaceX always conducts tests and learns from them. Back to the launch schedule, given Musk ever optimistic and overly ambitious promises, it's not exactly looking like we'll see Starship go orbital next month. But we're certainly excited for when the day does finally come. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget, share your ideas in the comment section. Everyone's support is the motivation for us to create more quality content. Thanks. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.